basically this is uh, an opening range system here All right so this red bar we can see broke out of the opening range um, as kind of highlighted you know by the yellow area here right and this opening range is um, the lizard indicator opening range um, indicator here so we can see that this red bar you know uh, broke out below the range um, but some of the um, conditions so this is not your standard breakout of the opening range this has some um, secondary conditions where uh, the bar that breaks out must not be touching uh, some moving averages here uh, right so we can see there's two moving averages here I think it's a 10 and a 20 SMA or EMA and all right so the bar that breaks out is also this bar is touching the two moving averages um, so the question is so, so the so this breakout bar the signal is blocked because it's touching the moving averages and so the question is well if the next bar doesn't touch the MAs but it does touch you know the upper or lower opening range then generate a signal so oh okay so actually the bar doesn't need to touch the opening range just basically the next bar you know that's below you know either above or below the range um, as long as the next bar is not touching the moving averages then generate a signal then um, yeah so what we're dealing with right is that the original signaling bar this your or the original breakout bar sorry so the original breakout bar you know traditionally would generate the breakout signal but you know that breakout signal is being blocked because the bar is touching one of the two moving averages and so right so the um, secondary chance to get a breakout signal would be if the next bar um, is below you know basically the next bar as long as it closes below the range and is not touching one of the moving averages then the next bar um, could yeah can, can generate this the breakout signal all right so here we go I've managed to create a similar situation here so let's take a look at what we have so here's the right traditional breakout bar and it is touching one of the SMAs so you know just to keep things kind of simple here um, we'll just use the 10 period SMA to block the original breakout signal right so <clears throat> since the breakout bar is touching one of the moving averages right this the this breakout signal gets blocked but now that the next bar is clear of the moving averages and it closed it's still closed above the range then the next bar would actually be would generate the breakout signal okay so that is the question so with that let's get to work all right so I have a file name here um, so now I can start um, working and building the system in Bloodhound here so all right so I'm gonna go to the logic board here by selecting the logic tab and let's make a new logic template uh, I'm not sure what to call this yet so I'll just kind of leave the template name as it is for now I'm gonna go through building basically the opening range breakout rather quickly because there's already a video you know in in detail building a breakout uh, opening range breakout so I am just gonna go through this kind of quickly here um, all right so we're just simply building a, a crossover solver here looking for when price crosses the opening range plot lines right fairly straightforward
And let's see, there we have it. All right. Let's see, yeah, markets really took off this morning, so. And let's see, yeah, there we go. There's, there's some more crossovers. All right, good. Just making sure that the crossovers look good. So, you know, a little tip. You know, if you're not getting crossover signals, you know, on the correct bars, then it's going to be because, you know, your your opening range indicator settings don't match the settings that you have on the chart, right? So when things, you know, when you don't see signals where they should be, you know, they're not matching up on the chart, but, you know, you are seeing signals, but they're just not matching up on the correct bar. It's 99.9% .9 of the time, you know, it's going to be because the indicator settings you're using in Bloodhound don't match the exact settings you're using for the same indicator on the chart, All right? So just always double check your indicator settings. So, um, all right. So there's that. So now um, I need to build the uh, signal blocking conditions here. So um, yeah, so if any part of the bar is, is touching the moving average, we're gonna block signals here. All right, and this has been done uh, just not too long ago as well. So I'm just gonna kind of fly through this quickly too. Yeah, all right. So with this solver here, right, whenever there's a long and a short output on the same bar, that that is identifying bars touching right a moving average there. And so that's what we're looking for. Um, Now, I want to. We want to block signals when the bar is touching the moving average. But right now we have an output, so this actually means that signals can only occur when a bar is touching the moving average, right? But we want the opposite. We want to block. So we're going to use an inverter for that, right? So now we can see when the bar is touching our moving average there is no output. So that no output will actually block the signals there. All right, so there's our crossover. And now we can block it with our little blocking condition here, there. All right, so now, yeah, so we did have a crossover. So we now need to somehow get this crossover signal further, you know, uh, further down the line, you know, uh, basically uh, we need to yeah, take that crossover signal and extend it further down, further in time until, um, until the bars are not touching the, moving average anymore so let's see here so to do that um, so we will use either the signal extender you know so we can extend this crossover signal you know further in time or the toggle node um, I think I'll use the toggle node here. hmm so if we use the toggle node Right, if we, you know, if we're looking at the toggle node, right, once the toggle node gets turned on, right, we need something to turn the toggle node off because look, we have all of these long signals, right, and these long signals are from prior 
breakouts, right? They're from prior breakout signals here. And yeah, so the issue, all right. So the issue that we're gonna have using the toggle node um, is that when we do get a signal, right? So when, when a bar is finally clear of our moving average, you know, and is, is still above, above the range here, right? We wanna generate a signal and normally, you know, the easy thought is, well, you just take that signal and feed it back into the toggle node, you know, with a delay, right? You, you just take like a one bar delay and feed it back into the toggle node, right? And you can reset it. But, you know, but um, the toggle do node doesn't allow circular references back to itself, um, right? Because you can, you know, basically you, you would, paralyze your computer when you create a circular reference you know basically creates these kind of paralyzing um, calculations so circular references you know from the output of the toggle node back into the reset are, are not allowed so yeah and that's the only way I can think of to turn the toggle node back off you know is to use the signal generated and feed it back in yeah so all right so now that I've given that some thought we're gonna bail on the toggle node and actually go with the signal extender and the same thing you know the same issue can arise with the signal extender in that we can't have a circular reference going back into the reset but what I can do but the signal extender it gives us the advantage that the signal, the signal extender has a limited, you know, extension. So you have to put in the maximum number of bars that the signal is extended for, right? And then the signal extender turns off. So we can see here, right? We have a uh, extend signals for five bars. And so we go one, two, three, four, five, right? So that's five bars after. So we have this, right, the crossover bar, and then we extended that, that, you know, that breakout signal, and we extended it forward, right? So it has a limited extension, you know, lifespan. And so since it does, we can now use the signal blocker with it safely. So, right. So with the signal blocker, you know, I can do this. So, but now we need to kind of set things up properly here. So, one second. One second. Hmm. All right. Uh, let's see. So, if if the breakout bar yeah, is the one that's possibly being blocked, right? So there's no signal, right? Because the breakout bar is blocked by the by the SMA. So you know, so from the signal extender, you know, I don't want to see the signal on. Actually, it may not matter. Um, yeah, actually, it may not matter. I was thinking that. I might need to delay the crossover signal by one bar before feeding it into the signal extender, right? So my thinking was that maybe I need to do something like this, right? And if we look at this, right, there's no signal on the breakout bar but the signal extender starts after the breakout bar. I don't think that's necessary though. Yeah, let's try it without it. Um,
All right, just getting these organized a little better. There. So here we 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 have kind of partly what's being looked for, right? So we now have a signal popping up, you know, afterwards, and but we need to verify, and we we have verified that these bars are not touching the SMA to be blocked, right? And we're doing that because, right, these bars here, uh, right, or this, this, these group of nodes here, right, is doing the blocking. And that group of node is connected into this AND node here, right? So this AND node is very similar to this one, except you know we have a signal extender so that we can possibly get our signal you know after the first breakout bar occurs but <clears throat> we need to apply the other conditions right so the bars following the breakout bar must be above the the opening range right <clears throat> so let's go back to Let's see, let's go back to this. All right, so number three, right? So if, right, so if, if the next bars, you know, touch, you know, or, you know, close above the opening range, you know, the upper opening range line, then we can get a signal. So, all right, so we need to add that requirement to this add node, right? So the, the upper end node, you know, that's just the original breakout bar only. All right, so we should probably kind of give that a name there, right? So there. All right. All right, so our first end node, you know, the end node on top, you know, is the breakout bar only. And the AND node below are, you know, after the breakout bars. So, all right. So we need to base, we need to make sure that essentially the close of the bar is still above the, the uh, opening range or below the opening range. So we will use a comparison solver to do that. All right, so we're gonna compare the closing price to the opening range lines. Right. So input A, we're gonna set the type to price and yeah, and we're looking at the closing price. So that's good there. And so now input B needs to be our opening range indicator. All right. There it is. Um, now I'm just using all the default settings. And now I just need to select the correct plots. And there we go, right? Pretty, pretty simple. Right, there we go. Yeah, so, you know, if the bar closes below the range, a short, if it closes above, we get some longs. So pretty straightforward. So that's how we make sure that, you know, any following bars, you know, are, still outside the range. Right. Plug that in there and connect that up like so. Now, right, so now we can see that, you know, we still have, you know, extra signals here, right? Uh, a few too many signals. And so that's where the signal blockers are gonna come into play. And so there we have it.
Right. So, um, you know, a, a, a key piece to keep in mind here is that your signal extender and your signal blocker need to be synchronized with each other, right? So with the signal extender, right, the, you know, the, the following bars after the first breakout, you know, the, the bars afterwards, you know, this secondary, you know, allowance of a signal to go through is limited to five bars, right, after the breakout, right? So there is a limit to this when you're using the signal extender, right? So if for some reason you need more than five bars, let's say maybe it takes 10 bars. On some days it takes 10 bars after the breakout before this secondary signal can occur, right? Because you have basically nine bars still touching the moving average, you know, for some reason, you know, somehow, right? Markets can throw all kinds of wonky things at you. And if you want to allow 10 bars to go by after the breakout and still receive a signal, well, then the, sig the signal blocker needs to be synchronized with that, right? So we can see here, we get a signal, and then five bars later, we get another signal. Well, that's because the signal blocker is only blocking for five bars. So we need to increase the signal blocker up to 10 bars as well. And there we have it, right? So now the signal extender, right, is allowing for 10 bars to possibly generate, you know, this, this secondary breakout uh, signal for up to 10 bars afterwards. So, and then the signal blocker also needs to be increased to 10 bars as well for its blocking. So, um, right, so those two need to be kept in sync. Um, so that's, yeah, that's the one thing needed there. So, all right, and I'll just knock this back down to five, probably just to keep it a little more reasonable there. And so, all right, we have these two different signals here. And so now we need to join them back together into one signal uh, pipeline, I guess you could say. So I'm going to use an OR node and I can combine both of these signal sources together with an OR node. And there we have it. So, all right. So let's close that out. Let's shrink this up. And we'll take a look. There we go. All right. Yep, so here we can see, right, the breakout bar was touching the moving average, no signal, and then the next bar was clear of the moving average, and we got a signal. And here, yeah, here's the, you know, the breakout bar signaled because it wasn't touching the moving average. All right, let's see what we get further back here. Yeah, once again, breakout bar is touching, so the following bar generates the signal. Let's see, that's the breakout bar. Yeah, those are all breakout bars, breakout bar. Yeah, I was hoping to maybe find a couple of bars touching the moving average. Let's see, well, let me... Let's increase the number of days here. Yeah, it seems like, you know, so far, you know, the follow-up signal happens usually right after the breakout bar. So that seems to be pretty common. Hmm. 
Yeah, uh, I was just double checking this bar here. You know, it looks like it's touching the moving average, but it's not actually. Yeah, so it looks like, you know, that the second bar after the breakout bar is always seems to be pretty much uh, clear of that moving average. So I was hoping to find an example where maybe the signal is delayed by a couple of bars after after the breakout, but that doesn't seem to happen that much. All right, yeah. So, all right, we'll leave it at that.